Hi guys, welcome to another Wernie Electronics Repair video. This video is a review of something quite interesting. This was sent to me, and you can see what it says, it says on the box, by Andon Star. So this is one of their latest microscopes, which they asked me if I would kindly review. So I have received this for free as a review sample but I'm not being paid to make this review I have full freedom to review this fairly and give an honest opinion on the device so the first thing we need to do is open the box looks like it got caught up in the customs at some point stop cage uh, the stop cage but they released it or it escaped uh, okay so you can see it's not being opened, it's all sealed. So let's have a look to see what is in the box. Okay. Open the box, yeah. Open the box. Okay. I think now we can probably get into this. Yeah. And here we have it. So, Digital Microscope 407 Pro User Manual. And we have a bit of information about it. So let's have a look to see what we have. Here is a specification. So four megapixel HD sensor. It's Ultra HD, yeah, it does um, 24 frames per second. It does uh, full HD, 1920, 1080, it's 60 frames or 30 frames a second. I wonder if that's optional or there's some, you know, it only does one or the other. Be interesting to see. Records video, magnification up to 270 times, photo resolution, format JPEG, yeah. Focus is down to five centimeters, but we probably want to have more like the maximum focus distance, which is basically giving us how much space to work under it. Okay, frames per second, micro SD card storage not included. It has a seven inch screen. Okay, so this tells us what we have in the box. Now, I saw these online and I noted that one of the features which I rather liked about this which is partly why I actually agreed to review it is that this can output an image to HDMI at the same time as displaying an image on the built-in screen that's what I understand from looking on the internet okay so we have some instructions some connections Okay, and just your usual instruction manual, but I'll tell you what, let's not use it. Let's have a look to see how intuitive this is to work with. And if we need to read the book, then we'll read the book, yeah. So that's the instruction manual in English. I guess it will come in the language suited to the territory where it's been sold. So here is the actual microscope itself we'll just leave that in the bag for the moment and we have a remote control i think this is for the zoom i have a power supply a little bag of bits and bobs and it looks like i need to get the uh, packaging out to get to the rest of it a bracket to hold the microscope. A little uh, thing with buttons on. Uh, some sort of control. On off probably. It comes with a HDMI. Mini HDMI to HDMI cable. And it comes with a base. So let's see if we can get this put together. I've just taken the last uh, parts out of the box, so there's this tube as well, which I'm guessing is pretty essential, yeah. 
So I think this is going to be fairly easy to put together. There is instructions, or well, sort of should I say there are instructions, but let's see. So we have a couple of LED lights here. This, yep, screws into there. Seems fairly intuitive. Okay, a little adjustment here. Yeah, this also is this up and down. So this is going to go on here one way or another. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to go on this way. Okay, quite probably actually goes on that way. As I say, I'm not reading the instructions. I'm just looking at how intuitive this is. Okay. Now I will just double check that, but that seems the right way to me. Yep, in fact, that is completely correct. So this goes on to here. Oh, this is quite nice. So basically, th this will lock the position side to side. And the little ring underneath is like a, a locking ring to keep it steady. And then this alters the height of the microscope itself. So we have that. Here is the microscope. So I can see straight away this has a little slot for an SD card. It has the mini HDMI. It has a USB connector. It looks like a few indicators. And this will actually, yeah, this tilts basically. So this is going to go into here. This is the focus adjust. So obviously the ring goes above that. So we'll just see, will this actually go into here? Probably if we just loosen these screws. Yeah, this just drops in. Yeah, and it sits above the focus adjustment here. And we can just tighten the little screws. I'll just get it straight. There we go. Couple of connectors and the power supply. Obviously, we need to just take the little uh, plastic off here. Okay, a pl plastic protector, which is in two pieces. But both pieces do come off. There's like two. I always like to say it comes like a screen protector as well if you want. And you can just take the top one off. Uh, just say the display, display isn't waterproof. Okay, don't press on the display when installing the battery. Oh, so it takes a battery. Okay. So it's basically saying don't put any pressure on the display itself. Okay. So keep your fingers away from that. These little set of screws here. I can say confidently fit down on here in some way. Probably to fit something to hold a specimen or something in place, but I think we possibly don't need them for our use. If you can even see where I am. Uh, I can show you. You can see where I am. So we have these here. I'll just check, but I think we probably don't need them. Yeah, they for kind of holding something still. I mean, bear in mind these microscopes, although they are useful for electronics inspection and possibly soldering, we will find out. They also have other uses which i think is where this is probably required uh, so i don't think we need those for now uh, we have the cable with the little control on it so this has well it has a usb and that obviously goes in the power supply so that's with the power in and it has two connectors on here, one power and one micro HDMI, sorry, micro USB. So this obviously must go into here, I'm guessing. Let's see. 
let's see how intuitive it is. Uh, well, I don't see anywhere else for it to go. But I will double check, but I really don't see anywhere else it will actually physically go. It does indeed go there. Okay. So it is actually intuitive. You can go to here. Uh, this is the power for the uh, LED lighting, which will no doubt go into the base somewhere. Yeah, at the back of it, in fact, there. Okay. That's the cable attached. Let's have a look at the remote. This may not have a battery in it. Um, yeah, it doesn't come with batteries. I don't see any in the box, but to be quite honest with air freight restrictions, I am on Grand Canary, one of the Canary Islands, so it would have come on air freight, and maybe they've just been removed. So I guess yours may or may not come with batteries, but they're just AAA batteries, so not a problem. Let me get some. Okay, I have some batteries, so we can just uh, fit these. And that is it, it's constructed. I have to I have to give them 10 out of 10 for intuitive construction, although I did check the connections physically, there is nowhere else for them to go. This is obviously an SD card, this is obviously a mini HDMI, and this is the cable. So first of all, let's try the microscope just using its built-in display and see how it works, see how easy it is to use. Well, plug in and the light comes on. Welcome. Ah, and we have, yeah, because obviously it's the black base, nothing to view. Let's just find something we can have a look at. Okay, this is a scrap board, a small motherboard from a laptop and straight away we have a very nice display there yeah that's very that's very clear okay I'll just set it to an angle where you can see it and I can see it clearly actually the viewing angle of that is very good let me just yeah, I can, I can view that. I'm actually looking almost directly across it now. Almost. It's vertical. It's directly towards me. And that has a very wide viewing angle. It's also easily adjustable. That I like. You can even see every speck of dust on this. So that's just with me setting the microscope... Um, without actually bothering to check anything, distances and such like. Um, let me see how far I have the microscope from the target. Just use my trusty ruler. So I have that at about just over five inches, or if you want it in uh, metric, about 13 centimeters, okay? I have about 13 centimeters. Let me see how high this will actually focus. I'll move the stand as high as I can. Okay, that's, that's now at the top of the travel. Put the little locking ring, okay. So I now have it right at the top of the travel. Can I focus it? Yes. I'm gonna have to alter the focus for my overhead camera for you guys, but let's see. But yes, I can get this in focus. Okay. Let me set the uh, focus. Okay, guys, just move the LED lights out of the way a little bit. So that is now at the maximum elevation. Let me tell you how much space I have from the target. Well, I can tell you straight away my uh, ruler isn't long enough. Yeah, it's only 15 centimetres isn't long enough so we'll use one of these it 
that is 19 centimeters let me show you on the inset camera as well so you get a good idea how much space we actually have here yeah okay a bit further away okay you can see it now and i'll just show you again with the uh, ruler that we have about 19 centimeters yeah so almost eight inches seven and a half inches so that's the furthest i can get it to focus but there's still range in this so i suspect you could actually mount this camera onto some sort of uh or the mount and have it even higher than that if you wanted to okay let's see if we can alter the zoom that might actually be what this is for let's try make a bit of space yeah it has a push and a minus button on it that doesn't alter the zoom that turns it off okay that turns it back on, boots up again. Okay, I'm not sure what the plus and minus buttons do. It all seems to be altering the brightness somehow. Let me have a look in the manual. Okay, quick check. So the plus and minus on here are actually the brightness. Yeah, and that's working. We can alter the zoom and we need to use the remote. So on this, we also have brightness adjust. Uh, and we have zoom. So it says. Is the remote working? Maybe you have to point at the sensor on the front of the screen. I'll zoom the camera out a little bit so you can see a bit better, guys, okay? there so maybe we have to point this at the front of it okay oh yeah okay so it was actually on minimum zoom and i can now zoom in And we can now zoom out. So that is effectively the minimum zoom at the maximum distance, okay? Let's see how much the maximum is. That is the maximum zoom. Now notice the focus is very good on this. The focus stays, uh, you can see. This is really nice, guys, I have to say. Just using the inbuilt screen, this is nice. Didn't require much to work out how to work it. Okay, let's have a look in the menus. So we have a menu button on the remote. Resolution, let's have a look. So that's set to full HD 60 frames at the moment. Let's go up. Ultra HD. Doesn't seem to have any particular effect on the image on the inbuilt screen. It may do on an external monitor. I'll set it back to full HD 60 frames a second because my monitor will like that. Uh, exposure yeah this must be like a brightness yeah okay okay what else do we have uh, a date stamp this is when you're taking photographs so you can switch it on or off I don't actually have an SD card to hand unfortunately but it seems fairly obvious Sharpness. So have like strong. Did that make a little difference? Good or soft. I don't see any difference on the screen particularly. 
freeze off or on on oh yeah I see that's frozen the image off yeah that freezes the image contrast go to high oh yeah okay high contrast medium contrast oops I'm on freeze again low contrast okay quite nice Possibly the high contrast is very useful for following tracks or reading difficult to read chips maybe. I'll put it back to the standard of medium and colour. That's, yeah, that's the last option, colour. Normal. Monochrome. Sepia. negative oh look at that guys that possibly makes it easier to see the actual tracks what do you think guys think let's just go back into the back to the normal yeah maybe not but it's a nice feature i mean that is nice i mean why not have the feature you know if you use it or not fair enough so that's what we have in the menus we have a mode switch doesn't oh ah this is changing the screen resolution no files so that that must switch between four three between ah oh, i found now another menu so i press menu again goes between setting video and settings so we now have plenty of other options grid line setting what does that actually do version default settings format frequency language date and time do we have to press sideways to yeah yeah getting some so cross line on or off let's try let's try putting some of these things on oh yeah we've now got a target on there uh cross line yeah, we've now got a grid of lines on there. Okay, you can see it. Uh, we can also change the colour, the width and such like by the looks of it. Okay. I don't find any particular use myself for that, apart from maybe from some sort of tutorial use where I can point the crosshair at some device I'm talking about maybe. Okay. Set that to off. Come back out of here. What else do we have? Off. Okay. Just trying to figure out how to get out of the uh, menu. I use sideways before. No, I press menu again. Yeah, menu again. Date and time, language, frequency, format, the card, default settings, version. Uh, Okay, and we have a factory default setting. Return to the defaults. Okay, fair enough. So that's what we seem to have in the menu. Now let's zoom down as close as we can and see how it's working at its maximum magnification. Yeah. So according to the manual, it will go down to 5 centimetres. So it's now, at, well, about 18. So let me just set the height a lot further down. Okay, that's very close to 5 centimetres. What do we have? Let's see if we can focus on something. We certainly can. Yeah. That may not even be the maximum. Let me see if I get a little bit closer than that. It says five centimetres, but it looks like I can probably get a bit closer. Drop it down a little bit further. 
Okay. I'm now about four centimeters. And I can still focus. Yeah. I can still focus it very nicely. That's probably about the limit. Okay. This is nice, guys. I like this. This is nice. Well, let's go to uh, something like that. The board's not level, so that's why the focus is changed. It's not that the my ship's going out of focus, it's just the board isn't level. And in fact, the board is a little bit closer now to the lens, and I think I've actually reached the limit of its focus ability. Okay, so I've now gone back to a more flat part of the board. You can see that it's focusing very well. Let's now try to zoom it. So that's on minimum zoom at the moment. Let's go up to maximum. That's maximum zoom. And that little capacitor looks very big, yeah. So that's the maximum zoom of it. At this distance, it wouldn't be particularly easy to solder. And if I just tap on the bench gently, because of the magnification, I'm getting a little bit of vibration, you see, it just tapping the bench. I'll put it back now to a more like a working distance. We'll see if the vibration affects it still. And then let's try to solder under it. Okay, that's back at its maximum working distance. You can see just how far I have from here down to the board, yeah. I have a lot of room there. That's better than my optical microscope, in fact, for working distance. Yeah. I have the camera on the minimum zoom, and I can still quite clearly see little surface mount capacitors, for example. There's one uh, just there. So let's try and remove that. Now, this might be where you need something to hold the board down. I don't think those little clips exactly help, but let's see what we can do. We'll try and remove this capacitor, okay? I've just tilted to an angle where I can see it a little bit better myself to make it easier. So normally to remove this capacitor, we would probably set it sideways like this, yeah? It's easier for me to now get to the capacitor to pick it up off the board. Yeah, I'll put it at an angle where I can work easily. I've just noticed, by the way, by moving the LED lights on their little goosenecks around, you can set the lighting at an angle that you want. Yeah. To get rid of shadows and such like that's nice. Let's add a bit of flux to it. So we'll go for this capacitor here, the one by the uh, hole there, easy to find. Normal way I do this is to add a bit of leaded solder on the end of the soldering iron and then come in from an angle as best I can from the side and just lift it off the board basically. So I've got some solder. Let's put some solder on both ends of it. Okay. I'm very used to using an optical binocular microscope, which gives me stereoscopic vision. And when I'm looking at the screen on my stereo microscope, I find it almost impossible to work under. But with this, and the reason I've tipped the screen towards me a little bit is evident, I think. I can probably actually do is I move the little light out of the way. It was in my way. I can reposition that. So here is the capacitor. Let me see if I can actually remove it. We can get a screen. Yeah, off it came. It's actually stuck to the soldering iron. I now have it. Okay. There is the capacitor. 
there let's clean it up and let's see if i can refit that okay so first of all we need to clean the excess solder off the capacitor we'll just move the board out of the way and we have our capacitor there yeah you can see it's got a nice big blob of solder on that's because i added leaded solder so i need something to work on i don't want to damage the base of, of this this is actually, you can see the lid off an old satellite receiver, which I normally use for working on hot things. So let's try it. So that slides over the base easily. There is my capacitor. Okay. So we'll clean the solder off the capacitor first, and then we'll try, we'll clean the PCB and then try to solder it back on. I just have to adjust the focus slightly because I've raised it up. Okay, nice and sharp. Hope you guys can see it. If I tilted it flat upwards, I wouldn't be able to work with it myself, actually. Okay. So to clean this, a little bit more flux. Let's put it there. We'll get hold of the capacitor and the tweezers. Okay, I'll just move the lamp slightly out of my way. Okay. There I have the capacitor. And we can just clean the excess solder off easily. Yeah, nice and clean now. Turn it around. Nice and clean. So that's our capacitor. Now let's look at the board. Okay, we got the board under here. You can see where I was working. I, I've got it directly onto the base of the microscope now it's not actually touching it so i'm not too worried about the heat so now let's clean the flux off the board where our capacitor was okay let's clean the end of the bit all right let's just do it you'll notice i'm using this bc3 which is very chunky if you've watched my repair videos you'll see i almost always use this and it's actually better to use than a fine tip because you get the heat into the board that you want easily. Uh, I can solder these with this tip, no problem. I have more difficulty with a fine tip. Okay, so that's cleaned the board. Let's now get our capacitor. Okay, here is the capacitor. Sometimes with this you need two pairs of tweezers if it's gonna stick. Okay. I will actually clean the pads first on the board with a bit of braid. It's easier if it will sit flat. So let's just do that. Okay, one pad is flat, the other one is flat. So I'll flatten the pads. Now let's take a bit more flux. Okay. And this is where we sold the capacitor. Now this will depend a lot if you're right or left-handed. If you've done this work for a while, you've probably kind of become ambidextrous. As I have, I've become much better with my left hand than I used to be. So here is our capacitor. Okay. Almost in position. I'll just move the light to get out of my way slightly. Okay. Let's now get the capacitor ready to solder. So that's the capacitor. Yeah. What I'll do now, I'll use some fine solder, 0.2 millimeter. I'm going to add a little bit of solder onto the pad that over here, this one. Yeah. I'm going to move the capacitor away just slightly so I don't get caught on the end of the soldering iron. So I've added a bit of solder to that pad, yeah? Okay. Now let's solder it on. So I'm going to use my right hand with the tweezers. It's, I'm generally better this way. Here is the capacitor. So I'm basically going to get the capacitor and slide it towards that pad. You can do this with hot air if you prefer. Everybody has their own methods. Yeah, I don't do it the way I do just because I do. Do it the way that works best for you. 
Okay, I have my soldering iron. Let's get onto it. So, soldering iron coming in from this end. Capacitor, yeah. And we just slide it over and bring the tip in. And that should solder that down, yeah. If it's not quite flat now, you can just push on it slightly with the tweezers from the top. Just touch it again. Okay, and that's now flat. Okay, it's slightly offset. I mean, if you really want to, you can adjust it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. We can if we want to. The whole board slides. I say you're probably better with something to clamp the board in place. Okay. That's now on there. It's clear of that pad. But again, you can now slide this down to around to suit yourself. Yeah, it's easy. You see, I'm, I'm actually just sliding it as I want it. I'm being very perfectionist about this, but you don't have to be. Okay. I'm happy with that now. I'm sure you will be happy with that now. And then we just need to come in from the other side with a little bit of solder. It's probably best to hold the capacitor down. So I've got a little bit of solder. I'm now going to use the tweezers with my left hand. If you want, you could just rotate the board. We see I'm very steady with my left hand as well. And we can just solder this end. Okay. So there is our capacitor nicely in place. Last thing, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and then it's ready. Just put a little bit of kitchen roll underneath it. Okay. Okay, so that went very well. I think you will agree. We can uh, zoom in. Uh, that looks almost professional, guys. Yeah, <laughs> almost professional. Um, so it's definitely good for soldering under it. And I find especially if you tilt the screen directly towards you, and I didn't have it directly towards me, I think with it directly looking into my viewpoint, it would probably be even better. Right, let's see how this works with my monitor and whether or not it will display an image on the screen and on the monitor at the same time. This is the supplied cable for the HDMI. It has a uh, mini HDMI on one end. I think that's the correct term for them. HDMI on the other end. So we'll just attach this to the microscope in the only place it would possibly go. Okay. And I'm actually going to use a couple because my monitor is attached to the wall. which already has a HDMI cable on it which I normally use when I'm repairing graphics cards and computers. So I'm actually just going to connect a coupler between the two. That should work. I'll put something back on here so we can see it. Okay. Yeah, you can see that quite clearly. Focused. Yeah. I'll switch the monitor on and I'll put the camera where you can see the monitor. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be doing to do this on my desk, but we can have a look. So you can see my monitor is here. Just alter it around a bit. Okay. Just move this slightly. Okay. We're all in shot. You can see what we're doing. Yeah. So that is my monitor. HDMI. Now let's connect the cable and see what happens. Okay. Well, both screens have gone blank. This has come back on. Ah, and the monitor's on. Oh, that works really well. I had a ADSM 302, an older model. It had, a, I think, a 5-inch screen. I'm pretty sure this is a 7-inch screen. We can see. Yeah, 7-inch screen. Okay. And that would display onto the monitor, but only 
when the money was on by itself. So effectively, when you pulled the monitor into the unit, it would disable the screen here. This clearly does not do that. Yeah. I mean, that looks huge on the monitor. The picture's a little bit grainy, I would say, on the monitor. More so than on here. But it's certainly very clear. I still have this thing where I'm just tapping the bench and it's slightly moving the picture. Let me see how I have the magnification set. Okay, so it's at the maximum. This is now at the minimum, which is probably more like it. And yeah, you still got that. You can see it probably a bit more on the monitor, but it's not bad. I suspect my optical microscope is just as susceptible to that, to be quite honest. That is really, really clear, I have to say, on the screen. Okay, let's have a look at how much these microscopes are selling for. I'm looking at the And On Star official website. This is their home website and shop. And there seem to be a few different versions of this microscope. We have an AD407, we have an AD407 Pro 3D, at least those two. This one says soldering digital microscope that they actually both say soldering microscope so we have those two here now the one i have is actually according to the manual the 407 pro but it doesn't mention 3d so i'm not totally certain which version on the and on star website is the actual one i have i will ask them and put it into the comments we can have a look also on AliExpress. See if we can find the exact one I have. Yes, this one, and on Star AD407 Pro, seems to match the model I actually have. And it's a very similar price to the ones we can see on the and on Star website. We can also have a look on Amazon. This is the 407 3D, but doesn't mention Pro, nor does that one. This one is the Anon Star 407 Pro, but doesn't mention 3D. So it's really a little bit, I wouldn't say misleading, but I'm unsure exactly which one is which. But we can see here that the 407 Pro is 239, which appears to be the cheapest option, cheaper than AliExpress in this case. Just for comparison, my optical microscope is similar to this one, but with a double boom stand. So these USB microscopes are cheaper than an optical microscope with the camera, or as it says here, HDMI USB video. So they are a cheaper option than the optical microscopes. And I'll just talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Just before I finish, just one other point in particular I'd like to mention, if we can take this off here, is whether this microscope will allow you to see large PCBs all the way over. So this is a ATX motherboard, it's about the biggest you'll ever find really, way of PCBs. So let's have a look. So I want to see how far into the board I can actually view. Let's just set the magnification. Okay, that is actually on minimum. So I can view to about here. Okay, uh, you can see where I am. So again, I can view to about here. So it's not possible to view the whole of a large PCB. That's one limitation I would have to mention. Compared with my optical microscope. This is my optical microscope. It's an Amscope clone. So on a double boom stand, you can see it there. Okay. And you can actually see it on the screen as I'm recording. So with this microscope, one major advantage is I can actually view the entire PCB. 
Yeah, I can push the microscope a little bit further in so it stays on the desk. So this will allow me to view the entire PCB. Okay, you can see. Having said that, I think the Andon Star has a wider field of view. We can test this quite easily by looking at this socket. So on minimum zoom, which we are, uh, that's how much of the socket I can see. The working distance is about 15 centimeters okay to the actual microscope okay so about 15 centimeters and you can't see all of that cpu socket i'll show you on the screen there yeah so that's how much of it i can actually see let's have a look now with the and on star okay so we're on the and on star. In actual fact, the optical microscope has a slightly wider field of view. But there isn't that much difference, really. Okay. This and on star AD407 definitely has some pros and cons. The major disadvantage, one, is that you can't view entirely across a large PCB such as an ATX PCB nothing unusual just an ATX PCB a common thing yeah although I suspect you could find a way of doing that by mounting the microscope off a shelf or something similar in fact you could do if you made like a low shelf that the motherboard will slide under you could do it I mean it's not really a problem but I will mention it because you would have to do something to allow you to work on those sort of boards. The camera on the and on star and on the monitor definitely gave a better picture than the HD camera on my optical microscope. It's a sharper, clearer image. I hope you can see that on the video. On one side of the coin, and I know a lot of you guys know I have something of a B in my bonnet about optical microscopes being far better than USB microscopes. And the main reason is stereoscopic vision. I can work much better when I'm looking through a microscope because I have stereo vision, depth perception. And if you've watched my repair videos, you'll see sometimes I'm working by looking at the screen and I can't solder properly and I make a joke about it. And I say, I need to look down the microscope. And then I do it like a pro, yeah? Well, almost. I do it to the best of my abilities, yeah? Um, but this microscope, this and on star, you've seen me change a small surface mount capacitor with no particular difficulty and as I commented at a time if I'm looking directly at the screen in front of me with it tilted directly towards me I actually can work very well with it and I think I can get used to that pretty well to be quite honest so would I buy this one over the other one I already have the optical microscope and I will stick with it the Andon Star has a few advantages. It's much smaller. It takes a much smaller footprint on the desk. I mean, the optical one is big. You can see the base stand, which is useful for putting rubbish on. Yeah, you can see this is a big, big device. Yeah, it takes a lot of space across the desk. The Andon Star is much smaller, and if you don't have the space for the optical microscope. It would be a good choice, I can say that. The Andon Star is also cheaper than the optical microscope. Probably the one I have with the double boom stand would cost you about 600 to 700 euros now. The Andon Star is about half that. Yes, you can get microscope optical like mine with a much smaller stand for maybe 450, somewhere in that region. So if budget is important to you, then yeah, that is another factor you need to consider. I've used cheaper USB microscopes, and I can tell you now that this one, yeah, this one, 
is better than any of the cheap ones I've used, that's for sure. I can see the difference, I can see the difference in quality, and I can feel the difference in use. It also has a greater working distance from the board than the optical microscope. So, the final thoughts. You know what I say about it. I'm not saying buy this or buy that. I'm saying carefully consider which suits you. If you're in the budget for a USB microscope and you don't really have the space for an optical one or for other reasons you don't want to have an optical one, then this without doubt is a good product. It's a good choice. It's much better than the cheap ones, yeah. If you want an optical microscope with stereoscopic vision, it definitely is an advantage. Yes, you have to look directly down the microscope. It's If you're working long hours, maybe a little bit more uncomfortable, but I don't use mine all of the time. So if that, especially the stereo vision, is more important to you, go with the optical. I hope you enjoyed that review video. I hope you would agree that I'm giving a very objective opinion on this. And it's kind of like horses for courses. One will suit some people more than the other will suit others. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. And I'll see you all soon on another Wing Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.